Hello everyone, it's me Alon, and today hey, we're going to be doing more papers. So we have the 13 Cyprus Math La Mathematical Olympiad that's April 2012 for the 5th and 6th grade primary. So we can start these now. How many hours are there in the pair from 6.45 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. in the same day? So basically, since we know that the minutes are the same we can directly find the answer because that means it's only going to be a jump through hours so from 6 45 a.m. a.m. six hours you get 12 45 uh, uh, yeah. in the 12:45 a.m. And now, after that, it's p.m. So after you have the 12, it's 11 hours to get to 11.45 p.m. So basically, when you went 11 hours with 6 hours, you get 17 hours. So therefore, the answer is Vita. There's 17 hours in the span in a day. Question number two. If x is between 1 minus 1 upon 5 and 1 plus 1 upon 5, then x would e equal either of the following except... Okay, so the reason the answer is 5 upon 4 is because... Now, ba now basically, if this is 1 minus 1 upon 5, that's 4 upon 5. And this is 1, 1 upon 5. So obviously, 1 would be in the middle, so alpha is okay. And if you take the LC, like, okay, let me put this into, uh, 6 upon 5. Okay, there we are. That, then that would be easier. So, when you're taking the LCM of 10, you would have 4.5 as 8 upon 10, 6 upon 5 as 12 upon 10. So, 9 upon 10 would be in the middle, definitely. And when you're talking about 100, 101 upon 100, that's kind of 10.1 upon divide by 10 that that is basically 10.1 upon 10 though it's not actually advised to put decimals as numerators or denominators in a fraction since a fraction is already a decimal in itself but anyways since we don't need to we don't need to worry about that here because we're just since we know that 8 10 point 1 is between 8 and 12 we can say that e does correct and and basically for 11 what you could do is well when you're doing 10 upon 11 that can become 100 upon 110 then you divide the 11 from both sides so it's like uh that'd be 9 9 remainder 1 so 9 1 upon 11 Divided by divided by ten. Eight that's still between ten eight and twelve, so yes, delta is also correct. It's an, so that means but if we had Vita five upon four, it can become fifty upon forty and divide both by four and then you have twelve Okay, so then you would have 12.5 upon 14 away. Now, when you now basically 12.5 is bigger than 12, so that doesn't exist. That doesn't fit at all. 12.5 is bigger than 12. And wait, sorry, this is 10. When you're dividing both by four, so that means that it that Vita is wrong, and the answer is 5.4. Three times less a number three times a number less seven and is thirty-two. What is twice the number? Okay, that's easy. So what you have to do is find thirty-two plus seven since when we're doing this we would find the inverse. So less becomes addition. So thirty-two plus seven is thirty-nine. Thirty-nine divided by three is thirteen. Uh, and then thirteen times two. 26. So the answer is gamma 26. It's 
kind of obvious because after you're doing the less, you do addition. That's 39, and then the opposite of division. It of multiplication because it says three times is division so 39 divided by 3 is 13 so you got the past number so what's twice the number you just do 13 times 2 26 so the answer is gamma the average value for the weekly expenses of Andreas Vasiliki Georgia and Dimitris is 54 euros the average value for the weekly expenses of Andreas Vasiliki and Dimitris is 57 euros how much does Georgia spend okay so to find this first we have to find the average between both so we have for the first part we have four people and there's 54 euros so 54 times 4 is 216 now then we have three people with 57 euros with with the average is 57 euros the reason why we're multiplying by the number of people is because the average is normally the sum of like here it would be the sum of money they have divided by the number of people so here we're doing the inverse we multiply the average by the number of people to find the sum of money they have and then we would and then we would minus them to because on the second one we don't have georgia so it so if we mine them together we can find out the how much money georgia has which is 45 euros so therefore the answer is alpha 45. question number five in the figure below alpha delta is the bisector of angle a and alpha delta is equal to delta gamma that means that this that oh uh, wait Stylus. Okay, so that means that the triangle on the right hand side is an isosceles triangle because that means this side is equal to this side. There's even the lines here. And and that means that me that means this angle and this angle are equal. This angle is different to these two. So that means this is also 40. And now 40 plus 40 is 80. So 180 minus 80 is 100 obviously so we get 100 here now since we know linear pairs which are basically two angles which when not when are on the line they're equal to 180 degrees so we would have 80 here since 100 plus 80 is 180 and since this is a bisector that means that it would have cut this angle equally which means this angle is actually going to be the same as this 40 degree angle so this will become 40. now once you have 40 plus 80 that's 120. then we just do 180 minus 120 60. so the angle here is 60 and near and and since it's asking the measure of angle vita we found that 60 so therefore the answer is gamma 60 degrees question number six which of the following numbers divisible by two and seven Okay, so first thing we have to do is look at the last digit of all of the numbers. If it is a multiple of 2, we can keep them. If it's not, we can cancel them out. So, 362 works. Just take away all the old ones and that's basically it. Now, to find the, the divisibility rule of 7 is basically, like, let's start with the first number, 362 double the last digit and minus that by the remaining digits so 36 minus 432 it's not divisible by 7 but if you continue further double the 2 4 3 minus 4 minus 1 you you wouldn't you wouldn't get a number which is divisible by 7 which means that's wrong basically if you get a number divisible by 7 like this like a two digit number which is divisible by 7 or you get like 714 here as a final result and that means it's divisible by 7 and also now we have 366 a uh, double 6 is 12 36 minus 12 is 24 24 doesn't work it's not divisible by 7 so we can say that's wrong directly meanwhile for 364 we have 36 minus 8 and that would become 28 now 28 divided by 7 is 4 so that means it's correct but if you want to check even further 
8 times 2 is 16, 2 minus 16 is minus 14, and even if it's neg negative, 14 is 7 times 2, which means basically that the answer is lama 364. So you can do this without like checking it. However, another way you could do is maybe check if all of any of them are divisible by 14, because if you have 2 and 7, the LCM of 2 and 7, since they're both prime numbers, you just directly multiply as 14. So you check if any of them are divisible by 14, you can directly cancel beta and delta on the process, because they're odd. And if you're starting with a multiple that's even, all of the numbers will always be even too. So here when we check 364 divided by 14, uh, here we put 228. Um, and then we had the 84, I think, yes. So 14 times six. Yes, that's 84. So, therefore, the answer is then, therefore, you get 26, which means divisible. So, the answer is gamma. I don't think it'll work for alpha and eta, this divisibility rule, because since it's prime, since it's basically only one number that can be divisible by 14, that has to be the case because, like, if it's a prime number, there can't be any other LCM as 14 when you have like two prime numbers when you multiply them you get a number which has to be the LCM because there's no factors of 2 and 7 to make it shorter so therefore it has to if if it's not divisible by 14 they has to they can't be divisible by 14 at all and, and since this is two less and this is two more, the, you know there'll be remainders, so therefore the answer is gamma 364. Question number seven. From the set of digits one, two, five, eight, and nine, how many odd free digit integers can be formed? Assume that no digit may be used more than once. Well, there's a lot of possibilities for this, but to find this easily, you, got, you just have to look at the first odd three digit integers. So we can start with 2. 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 9. Then we have 1, 1, 8, 5, 1, 8, 9. So that's all of the ones for 1 already. Then we have 2. So, but then there is more numbers. You could say two. Oh wait, sorry. There's actually one more. Mm -hmm. One five nine or one nine five. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now if you do the next one, that's two. That's when going to be two. Eight one. Two. Oh, oops, sorry. So that's going to be two one five two five one. No, sorry, two one nine. And then we have two two five one two five nine. Then we have two eight one two eight five two eight nine. And then finally we would have uh two nine one and two nine five so here was six here it's one two three four five six seven eight nine which is a 
which is a difference of three numbers. There'd be three more numbers than the last one, but let's see if there's another pattern for the next one. You can just directly just do more of these for every single one. So we can just do five now. For, well, basically, if you're thinking about this logically, um, it seems that for for the odd digit numbers that there would be six it will be less because then if you're using an odd digit number at the start that there would be two there would be one odd digit number less so when we have six times three that's 18 and then this is nine and there's and there's two of those so two nine times two is also 18 when you do 18 plus 18 that's surprisingly 36. Your answer is delta 36. Basically, um, since there are three odd numbers, we can find six sets for one odd number. So six times three, 18. And here we have nine numbers for an even number. So nine times two, 18. Add them together, you get 36. So the answer is delta. Question number eight. Which of the following calculation yields the wrong result? You kind of have to do only trial and error for this, but the answer is eta. I can explain why easily since 9 times 6 is 54, 73 plus 54 is 127. Meanwhile, 7 times 3 is 21, 96 plus 21 is 117. We've actually done, found this is the wrong one before in another question, but anyways, if you know this, therefore the answer is eta. We warn in these kind of papers, some questions may repeat, so it's better to look at the past paper sometimes. I think this was almost all, also one of them, but okay, so let me explain this one. Question number nine. If a half plus two thirds plus three upon c minus one is equal to 23 upon 12, then what's c? Okay, so that means you have to find the LCM of 12. Like the LCM has 12, so that means that 1 upon 2 will become 6 upon 12. Wait, let me just uh, change it. Oh god. Six. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Huh? So I uh, have a 6 upon 12, and then we have 8 upon 12. So that means 6 upon 12 plus 8 upon 12 is 14 upon 12. We have no need of converting it into a mixed fraction, mixed number, sorry, a mixed number right now. Because that this is already an improper fraction and it's easier to work with improper fractions now. So when you do 23 minus 14, you get 9. So therefore, 3 as c minus 1, 3 divided by psi minus 1 is equal to 9 upon 12. Now if you look at this, this is multiplied by 3, which means this would also be multi psi minus 1 multiplied by 3 is 12. So when you do the inverse, 12 divided by 3 is 4, which means psi minus 1 is 4. That means you, if, you, if you add both sides with a 1, psi is equal to 5. If you can notice here, it's still equal because when I added this side and this side both by 1, by one, if you treat them the same, they'll be equal. So again, psi plus 5. Some people think of this as taking it to the other side. Like if we take the minus 1 to the other side, the, you take the sign with it always. So the sign will inverse, so it becomes addition and 4 plus 1, 5. Easy, right? Okay. Now, so therefore the answer is 5, and you your answer would be delta. Now, question number 10. For x is unequal to 0, let square, re, rectangle x be defined by x is equal to x divided by x plus 1 upon x. What is the value of the half? Okay, so basically, to find this, it would be a half divided by a half plus one upon a half may look a bit hard at first but it's actually not hard at all definitely not hard at all so when you when you have one upon one upon two now think which one which, this is a fraction this is a whole number which means this 
is the actual division sign. I made it bigger because we're focusing on this. Now, the trick is to take the, denom the lowest denominator, multiply by the one here, so you get 2 upon 1. And then, and then that's going to be equal. So, 1, 1 upon 2 is equal to 2 upon 1 is equal to 2. The, how you could also check this out is that if you do 1 upon 1 divided by 1 upon 2, when you're doing division, you to make it easier and make, make a multiplication, you swap the numerator and denominator on the right hand side. So that means 1 upon 2 would become 2 upon 1. So 1 upon 1 times 2 upon 1, it's 2. So therefore the answer there is 2. So 1 upon 2 divided by 1 upon 2 plus 2. Now we will basically be doing the same thing, but here let's make it easier for us and um, and basically let's let's uh, make this into an improper fraction. So two is four upon two, four upon two plus one upon two is five upon two. So one upon two divided by five upon two. That's big. You can just basically write one upon two divided by five upon two. Make the one upon two times. 2.5 you can cancel the 2 the 2 since it's multiplication you get 1 upon 5 this all you can also do this but if you're looking at this these two denominators are the same are the same so when these two denominators are the same you can cancel them and you get 1 upon 5 directly it's as easy as that so therefore the answer is alpha 1 upon 5 question number 11 the figure below alpha beta gamma Zelta is a rectangle with Vita Lama, so this side here has five centimeters. So the arcs, so ba the arcs, it's basically saying that, um, wait, let me look. Ah, these two arcs, it's saying that their diameter is alpha is at this and this respectively get the idea now m now wait now so m and l are the midpoints of sem of the semicircles so basically it's asking us to find the area of the triangle shade there now this is going to be easy because when you look at this so you have five so that means this side is also five centimeters, and these two are congruent squares. So you will get the the base here to be ten centimeters. Since if this matches up with this, then yes, you get the idea. Now, now here, you can imagine this to be another square. It actually still work. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh wait, no. That's a bit of a eh drawing okay so you can still imagine this to be a square so this would be five this would still be five five plus five is ten so ten centimeters this whole length would be ten centimeters as well you can just do ten times ten times half since the we found the base we found the height and then we just multiply by two so, or you would just say divide by two which you get 100 divided by 2, which you get, like, uh, if you're following bond mass, it's going to be 10 times 5, which is 50. Or you could just do mm, the multiplication, then the division, either way, 100 divided by 2, 50. So your answer is lemma, 50 centimeters squared. It's actually as easy as that, you just need to do some imagination, and you will get the answer. but it's not always like that sometimes it may work like this but it's not always like that but actually the easier way to do this is that since you know that this is the midpoint and this is five then this is definitely five then this has to be five as well so then you can get the 10 and therefore the answer is 10 by 10 to divide by 2 which is 50 centimeters squared gamma Question number 12. If k is equal to 1 plus a half plus 1 quarter plus 
One eighth. Wait, is it actually question number twelve? Oh god. Okay. So plus one sixteen plus one thirty two and L is equal to one plus a half of K, then L exceeds K by how much? Okay, so first we have to find the answer to K, obviously, by finding the L C M from for thirty two. So we have thirty so we have thirty two of so we can keep the one I guess as itself. Since we know that's thirty two upon thirty two directly. And then we have sixteen upon thirty two. Then eight up eight upon thirty two. Four upon thirty two. Two upon thirty two. And you see how they double and you know I mean they have each time. So basically that's what it's happening. That's what's happening. So we can do one plus two, three plus four, seven plus eight, fifteen, sixteen plus fifteen is thirty-one. So thirty-two plus thirty-one is sixty-three upon thirty-two. So that's K. But now it says L is one plus half of K. Is 1 plus the half of k. So that means when you're dividing by 2, you're multiplying by the half, basically. So, we would have uh, 63 upon 64 plus, and then we have 1 itself. So, 6. 64 upon 64 plus 63 upon 64 is equal to 127 upon 64. So when you when you when you compare this with this, um, you would basically have to find the the difference between them so when you so you would multiply this by 2 so 32 times 63 times 2 is 126 so 176 upon 64 if you notice that this one is bigger by 1 upon 64, then you directly find your answer. L exceeds K by 1 upon 64. Eta. So that's the answer. Now, question number 13. The following graph represents the distance in meters covered by a car in 40 seconds. In which of the following 5 second intervals has the car traveled the longest? It's 15 by 20, because if you look... the 15 seconds or 20 seconds if you look here it's a high jump which is not and that's compared to all of the others it's the highest jump definitely and it's clear to see so therefore the answer is beta 15 seconds 20 seconds question number 14 at a central high school the athletic club has 15 members and the music club has 12 members if a total of 13 students belong to only one of the two clubs how many students belong to both clubs? This is E. So first you have to find the number of students. So, I mean the number of members. So 15 plus 12 is 27. So there are 27 members. So 13 students, 30 members, only belong to one of the two clubs. Which, le which leaves the 14 students which belong to both clubs. So that means the answer is 14 eta. You just have to find the number of members... Minus that by the people we know that are only participating in one club and will have the rest. So the answer is eta 14. Question number 15. Uh, which of the following is the largest product? Okay, I think I meant to circle Vita there? Yeah. Um. Okay, so... The largest, you guys didn't say if it's correct or not, but I'm saying Vita, because when you, the comma here is the decimal, so 9, comma, 9, 9, 9, 9.999 times 9, that's definitely smaller, this is very small, so definitely not this one, this one would have 8 decimals, which is too small, 
as well. So it's between Vita and Rama here. I mean, sorry, Delta would have six decimals. So, so when you have Vita, that's 999 times 99, and then you'd only have one decimal point. And meanwhile, you have 99.99 times 999, which swaps everything. However, it's two decimal points, so it, it could be smaller. Wait, let me just check this now. Nine 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 nine. So first we have nine 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 times nine nine. I'll add the decimal point later, but uh nine. Yeah, you get the idea. So you have zero, ten, nine. So yeah. So then the answer to that one would become uh nine. 98,990.1 That'll be the answer to the first one. Now we have 9999 times 99 Oh my god! Wait, so then it would be 19999 and this then this And when you're checking it, 89, you'll get 18, 